Hello again folks, I am Blunty and today's video is actually a cross post from my DigiDirect TV gig um, mainly because it's about the Sigma 35mm f1.4 lens which I have had a lot of people ask me about here on this my personal channel but it just so happens that the uh, gig over at DigiDirect TV was the first chance I had to get hands on with it so that's where the review went but I'm cross posting it here so uh, as many people who asked about it as possible can see it and uh, you should watch the review if you're at all interested in this lens even remotely because it is a fantastic lens spoiler alert but it's an amazing piece of glass anyway on to the uh digidirect episode hello again shadow buggers i am blunty this is digidirect tv and in this week's episode we're looking at a lens that i've been dying to get my hands on ever since it was first announced <laughs> So please allow me to introduce you to the brand new Sigma 35mm f1.4 DG something or other letters and numbers and things. Basically it's Sigma's new 35mm lens. But here's the thing, in the few reviews that have dribbled out online so far and they have raved about it, it's all been shot on full frame cameras, which is fair enough because it's a lens designed to accommodate full frame DSLRs that make sense to test it on full frame. But you know, instead of sort of doubling up in my review, I thought I'd stick it on a crop frame camera and see how it goes. So I've got it on my very trusty Canon 60D here. I'm going to head out there and shoot with it and see how it goes for those of us who shoot on the APS-C cameras. It's reasonably hefty for a lens of this size. Lots of big chunks of glass in there and all that, and the body feels really nice. It's really solidly built. It's uh, got a, quite a nice feel to it too, sort of a satiny kind of finish there and a nice big focus ring around the side there, so you can't miss it. I hate those lenses with the sort of little narrow focus rings and you, you know, you have to look to see where you're grabbing it. Oh no, this one's nice and big and it's nice and sort of got a nice amount of uh, uh, clutching power to it. And then of course you've got the little window up there so you can zone focus and all that kind of stuff I really really like the way this lens is built auto focus manual focus switch on the side there as you'd expect no built-in image stabilization though so unless your camera has it you're uh, you're a bit out of luck on that score so uh, get out your tripod and your stabilizers and your steady cams and stuff like that if you want to shoot video with it I think but I did shoot a lot of handheld video with it, and the stuff you've seen uh, in this video has been uh, I think all of it was handheld come to think of it um, and it works kind of fine as long as you've got a good technique and stuff like that. Maybe we'll talk about shooting techniques, video techniques in another video, but not in this one. This one's all about the Sigma lens. Now then, this lens represents one of the first in the new reorganization and labeling of Sigma's glassware. They've started shoving various lenses under the titles of Contemporary, Sports and Art. And this one is the first one to come in under the flag of Art. It's been designed as a serious competitor to the equivalent high-end 35mm primes of the likes of Canon and Nikon themselves. And it comes in mounts for Canon and Nikon, of course, but also Pentax and Sony and, of course, Sigma. It's got a highly sophisticated optical design to minimize and suppress all the common aberrations, so what gets spat out onto your sensor is as crispy and as clean as possible. It's got an ultrasonic focusing motor for quick and very quiet focusing. It's not quite the fastest focusing lens I've ever used, but it's quite a long way from what I'd call slow, at least in stills mode. We'll get to video mode in a moment. But suffice to say, I never missed a shot waiting for the damn thing to focus. It is quick enough. And as you've been seeing, the nine curved aperture blades provide a very creamy, smooth and perfectly round bokeh in the outer focus areas, ticking off all the little boxes for those of us who love to shoot our lenses wide open. It'll focus as close as about 30 centimeters, and at the closest focusing distance, it's ever so slightly softer than everywhere else. But, you know, even saying that, it's still sharper than a lot of lenses at their very best, and focus throughout the rest of the range is tack sharp. Now, with a lens this fast, with a background blur this creamy, the temptation to shoot wide open all the time is very powerful, and you have to really resist the, uh, the religion of bokeh to some extent. But for the sake of doing my job properly, I did force myself to close the iris down for some tests, and I was met with some sharp images all the way through the range. Very encouraging. All across the frame, it is crispy. And for what I've read in those other reviews who have tested it on full frame bodies, it is super crisp all the way across the frame there too, with only absolute minimal softness when you get to the corners. And I'm not exactly sure which combinations of lens elements and sophisticated optical design and special coatings they've got on the glass inside this thing, but flare, chromatic aberrations and ghosting were nowhere to be seen. 
in extreme circumstances, you could see a slight amount of chromatic aberration. And I'm talking really slight, which means it's like easily, easily fixed. It's one of the most super clean lenses I've used in a very long time. So that's stills, but what about video? I know a lot of people out there, including some of my friends out there who are watching this, are excited to see how this goes in video mode, because that's what they do. Um, and I will say this much before we get to the sort of proof in the pudding and proof in the pudding, stuff like that. Um, the uh, live mode focus on this lens is very, very slow. I mean, live mode focus on the Canon 60D isn't terrific to begin with, but this lens is one of the slowest I've ever used for that. So you really want to manual focus this lens when you're using it in video. It'll make your life much, much more pleasant. But that aside, let's take a look. Now, given that live mode focus with this lens and especially on this camera body is a bit of a nightmare, pulling manual focus is the way to go, as I just said. And pulling manual focus video with this lens is super smooth. The resistance of that focus wheel is just right, allowing you absolute perfect control, even without a you know focus pulling rig and gearing and all that sort of stuff. The smooth transition throughout the focus looks especially pretty in video too, and detail is as clean as you could ever hope for. Lenses this fast are of course highly attractive to video shooters, primarily because unlike in stills where you can keep dropping down your exposure times to compensate, in video of course you've got a hard floor for your frame rate if you want to keep your motion looking nice, and that often means pushing your ISO to places where noise gets ugly. So the bright f1.4 max aperture of the Sigma here makes life much easier. Even if you're dealing with only the available sources and mixed lighting conditions of an evening in a city street. I have to admit, I really like this lens in the dark. Those smooth, round bokeh balls from point light sources are just super pretty. And the complete lack of ugly stuff like flare and chromatic aberrations and the like make for happy fun times in video mode, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I'll admit, some of this footage is noisier than I'd like, but, you know, the Canon 60D I'm using isn't especially great in low light video mode, even with a fast lens, so I'll forgive it that. It's not the Sigma's fault, but the Sigma let me get user footage where my other lenses would meet I'd be sucking up near useless crap in this kind of light anyway. But in any lighting I had it in street lamps, burning Aussie sun or even the hideous neon tubes of public transport facilities I simply could not get this lens to do anything but deliver a perfectly sharp flare free result and wonderfully smooth colours. And best of all, at the time I'm making this, you can own one of these brand new for under 900 Aussie dollars, which is ridiculously cheap for a lens this good. Canon's equivalent, for example, you'll be asked for about $1,600 dues. And I think this lens would probably still beat it in image quality, maybe only just, but still, for that price, for that price difference, it's, it's a no-brainer, it's awesome. So there you have it, clearly a lot to love about the Sigma 35mm f1.4, nice and bright, nice and sharp, feels great in the hand to use and all that glorious stuff that I've just gone over. So it's definitely a lens you should think about adding to your kit if you need something in that kind of focal length. I think it's certainly, yeah, I think it's fair to say it's the best 35mm I've ever shot with on my DSLR. So. And something else I like about Sigmas, by the way, they give you really nice pouches with their lenses as well. Some lenses you buy don't even come with a pouch or they come with sort of a, a little thin cloth baggie or something like that but Sigma actually give you a nice padded solid pouch with a decent zip on and stuff and that's just one of those little details that sort of counts. I mean let's face it when you're investing a whole bunch of cash in a nice lens you want to be able to protect it and uh, you know what does it cost them to throw that in versus what it costs them to make this. More manufacturers should be throwing in nice cases with their damn lenses I think. Anyway that's your lot for this week that's the Sigma 35mm f1.4 go and check it out I think you might like it. Come back and join us each and every Wednesday for another episode of DigiDirect TV. Of course, you can join us on the Google Plus Groups community page thing and share your shots and get feedback and sort of engage with the other viewers and subscribers out there are all sharing their stuff. And of course, don't forget about our photo challenge going on at the moment. Go back one video from this, watch it, enter. You get a chance to win a camera even, so that's all good. But that's it for me for this week. Come back next Wednesday for more, and uh, I'll be telling you all about this bag that's been sitting teasingly beside me. It's brand new, and I like it, but uh, you'll have to wait till next episode to find out about that. Oh my god, it's camera reception. Oh, I hate that, by the way, that whole inception, adding inception to a thing where, where you see something recursive. Inception means the beginning of. People who use inception to refer to recursive 
things happening are idiots because that's just, just they don't understand what the word means in the first place and it bugs the hell out of me because I can be a bit of a grammar Nazi and, and just using the word like that drives me up the wall. So this is not camera reception, this is recursive camera stuff. Um, well, you know. <laughs>